Okay, in this video, this is video 1.3.2, example one from the again, math one class. And here we're looking at exponential graphs. This is kind of like an introduction. So here we have an example. So we're going to talk about, you know, how can we plot this? Uh, what does the graph look like? And what does it mean? And we'll talk about some vocabulary that goes with it. So again, this is our first introduction to exponential graphing and the function. So we kind of have seen the equation before, but we'll kind of see it as a graph now and talk about visually what's going on. So let's kind of first read the problem here. It says, if a pendulum swings to 90% of its height on each swing and starts out at a height of 60 centimeters, what is the equation that models the scenario? So let's kind of just draw a little picture of what we're talking about. So here we have a pendulum. So let's say here's the ground. And, um, you know, there's the pendulum stand. And I'll just do a different color here. And the pendulum swings. So it goes up and it's swinging back and forth. And it you know, ends up over here. And then there's the other side of it. And it goes back and forth. The first time it swings, we're at a total height of 60 centimeters. Okay. Then when it swings and gets to one swing, then over here it's 0.9 of 60. And then when it swings back again, it's only 9% of the previous swing. So as it swings, it's going to definitely slow down, not slow down, I should say, but it's going to not go as high each time and eventually come to a rest. Okay. Um, so the, we want to graph the heights of each swing. So the first thing I want to do, let's, let's write an equation that models this. So exponential equation that we looked at from the previous lessons is y is equal to a times b to the x power. Now let's go ahead and identify the different pieces here. So a is your initial starting point. So that's where we're going to start at. Okay, your initial value. B is your rate, your multiplier. Okay, so let's kind of tag that. And x is the number of swings. Okay. Now we talked before in in this book about having independent and dependent variables. X is your independent variable. So just tag like that because you control how many times it swings. What is dependent is the outcome, the Y. So this is the dependent, okay? And this is the height of the swing. So let's go ahead and kind of make a chart of what this looks like. So again, your X is the number of swings. Again, I always like to label things so I have a highlight of what's going on. And Y is the height of the swing. Okay. So what we have here is at swing zero, it starts at a height of 60 centimeters. Okay. After we swing one time, we'll see what we get. Now let's kind of do it by hand here. So here we have the equation. Let me turn this on here. Let's say we start at 60, and the first time it happens, we're going to multiply it by 0.9. Okay, so we get 54. Okay, swing two. Now it's going to happen at that number times 0.9 again. So it takes 54 and times 0.9 again. And now we're at 48.6. Okay, so I'm going to write these down. Now again, we could do this one after another. Okay, but let's go ahead and type it into as an equation. So I'm going to type it into y equals... And I type in my initial value of 60, and then times it by 0.9, which is my multiplier. Okay, notice it's less than 1, so it decreases. And we're raising that to the x power. Okay. Now, before I even get to the graph, I'm going to go to second table. And notice we get a table of values. Okay, and I'm going to scroll up. And you can look at the values. So at 30 swings, we're at like 2. 20 swings, we're at like 8, 9. Let's start at zero and we'll kind of see what numbers we get here. So at zero, 60, 1, 54. So these are the same values that we calculated, but it does it each time. Now notice what happens to values. They decrease. And obviously it's not going to go as high each time. So let's go ahead and plot some of these values. So I'm going to plot these. I'm going to use uh, red again. Okay. So 
down here is the X. So 5, 10, 15. This is the number of swings. And on the side is the height in centimeters of the sw of each swing. So at zero swings, it starts at 60. Okay. Now at five, now let's go here. We at 35.4. Okay. So right about here. And notice we could plot them in between at one. And where's one? We don't see it. Like it's you know one fifth of the way. So one's going to be 54. And then we have two at 48. Three at 43 and four at 39. So notice it has this gradual decline. Now let's kind of do like every 5, 10, and so forth. So I'm going to scroll down to 10. So at 10, we're at 21. Okay, 10, we're at 21. And then let's go down to 15. And let's get 20 on there too. So 15's at 12.3. And plot these as, as we're going through this. 12.3. And then 20 is at 7.3. And notice it goes down and down. Now let's kind of go all the way out to like 35 and 40. Let's kind of see what the numbers look like. Notice it's declining, but not as steep of a rate. So 25, we're at 4.3. So let's kind of put that one on there. Um, and let's scroll down again. I want to get, let's, 30 is 2.5, 35 is 1.5. So let's plot those, 2.5, 1.5. Notice we never actually approach 0. So let's just scroll down. I'm just going to keep scrolling here. So now we're below 1. So at, you know, 50 swings, we're 0.3, so just, you know, barely off the ground, but it's still swinging. So notice we actually never touch zero. Now let's go ahead and connect these points and use a different color. And we have a gradual decline. Okay. Notice it curves. We call this an exponential function. It's not a line. It has a curve. It starts off steep, and then it, you know, kind of peters out and approaches zero, never touches it. Now, it never goes flat. As it goes to the right, it continually gets closer and closer and closer to zero, but never touching zero. So we call this exponential decay, meaning it's getting smaller. Okay. Now, I'm just going to sketch in here. If we had the opposite where the B value is bigger than 1, then we'd have exponential growth. And it would look like this. It still curves, but as the numbers get bigger, then the line gets bigger. So I'm going to make a little note over here. So if we have the B value, if it is less than 1, we have decay. If the B value is greater than 1, then we have growth. And I think that's a very big thing to keep in mind. Okay. So the things as we're going through this thing is we have to be able to sketch these things as a graph. Notice I have a scale here of, of x and y values. We have to understand what the x and y values are, independent, dependent. And we have to be able to graph it, find a table of values, use our calculator, and really understand what's happening here. So we can kind of see this thing swinging back and forth, what is happening. So this is a good example to kind of start off with um, in this lesson of Math 1.